All right. Hey, folks. Hey, folks. Is this thing on? Thank you all for coming. Appreciate you all being here. Uh, I've already had some really, really great conversations uh, with a few of you. Um, and I'm excited to meet the rest of you all. Thank you for coming to uh, the Social Equity Programs Application Clinic. Uh, we are super excited to be joined by uh, the special, some special guests, um, but mostly uh, excited to be joined by you all, the community uh, who make our work, who makes our work matter, um, and uh, is con consistently pushing us to do the right things in this space. So thank you all so much. Uh, my name is Darius. I'm the manager of uh, equity programming and strategic partnerships at the commission. Uh, I can, there is no way that I'll be able to do my job with any efficiency without um, the staff members of our comms team. So I just want to thank um, our folks here who you probably met at registration or in other conversations uh, and that you'll have an opportunity to meet uh, throughout the rest of this day, uh, Akila Armstrong back at the registration table. Thank you, Akila. Uh, Steven Caracello over there by our TV. Both of our, our program coordinators um, uh, within the um, equity uh, department. So please feel free to connect with them, ask them any questions. You've probably gotten a number of different emails from them already, uh, but we um, are tirelessly working to get these community events sort of off the ground to make sure that we're being um, accessible to you all, um, accessible to the Commonwealth, and, um, and really pushing our equity missions forward. So I know that you may have seen uh, videos of us on YouTube uh, through our public meetings, but we really want to make sure that we're uh, connecting with the community. Uh, so this is our second community event. Uh, last week we were in the town of Lawrence. Here we're in Brockton. Uh, and on March 20th we'll be um, in the Fall River uh, New Bedford area uh, uh, from five to seven. Um, so if you have uh, saw our flyers, if you have saw information about these community events, and you know of folks who are interested in the industry, who are um, looking to connect in Boston, Fall River, uh, we have a Springfer Springfield Holyoke um, uh, event coming up, uh, and there are a few others. Please, please, please pass on the word uh, if you came here today and you didn't uh, get an opportunity to answer your questions, you're welcome to come to another meeting as well. We'll hopefully have a lot more folks um, being engaged in conversations, um, and we're hoping to be a, a useful asset to the community. Um, so please, please, please connect with us um, throughout this day. Uh, we have a brief agenda for you all today. Um, we want to make sure that we're utilizing this space to connect and uh, get your questions answered. As I share with you, this is an application clinic, so we really want to make sure that any questions you have around your application that is current, if you have, uh, if you were in a past cohort and maybe you hadn't uh, sort of logged into your Mass CIP in a while or saw anything on Talent LMS, um, and you have any questions about that, we want you to ask those questions too. So maybe if this is not, a, you're initially connecting, maybe you're reconnecting, uh, maybe if you're looking for folks who are in the industry um, and, um, and uh, have sort of been, have a few more steps beyond you that you're looking to learn from, uh, this is the place for you as well. Um, so we'll have uh, some conversations from some folks in the industry. Uh, we'll have a brief presentation about what the social equity program is. Um, and then we have some guests here who can help with some um, additional resources around uh, what you may need to sort of get you, um, get you uh, beyond the steps that you may be at. Uh, but before we jump into our agenda, I do want to welcome our esteemed, uh, one of our esteemed leaders uh, who, shared with us that he desperately, desperately wanted to be here, but he had a, uh, an engagement, but he is here, and it speaks to his, just his leadership and his dedication and his commitment to equity uh, in the Commonwealth. So I just wanted to welcome, if you will, to share a few words, a few remarks, Commissioner Bruce Stevens.
Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, happy to be here on behalf of my, my colleagues at the commission, but more importantly, happy to welcome all of you. Taking time out on a Saturday to come in, hear more about our social equity program. When I first came to the commission, there was a lot of prestige. There was a lot of interest in this program. It is the first in the nation. And it really, I'm excited because it allows the opportunity for folks who are thinking about what my opportunity in this exciting new industry, I don't want to say new, any, I don't know if I can say new anymore, seven years old, whatever. I still think of it as a new industry. I still think of it as people looking for opportunity. Whether you want to simply work at one of our licensed establishments, whether you want to look for a management opportunity, with one of our licensed establishments. What if you want to be that entrepreneur yourself and be a licensee and open a facility? Or whether you already have another business as a plumber, electrician, marketing, you're just trying to figure out a way to connect with this new industry. Our whole ancillary support track is an exciting opportunity for you as well. So thank you all for turning out. I can't thank our social equity team. They're incredible. They're an incredible resource. So even if you leave her today and say, ah, I had four more questions I want to ask, they want to hear from you. Don't think that you're bothering them. They want to hear from you. They want to reply to your questions. So I get asked also a lot because this is the fourth cohort, because this industry has been up and open for about seven years. People say, well, I keep hearing there's no more opportunity or did I miss a window? I don't think that's the case because I tell you a lot has changed since the last cohort and they're pretty significant changes. One of those is the establishment of a social equity fund. The three previous cohorts didn't even know about that. The social equity fund is meant to provide loans and grants to social equity program participants who want to start their own business and understand that there are some critical capital challenges right to doing that. So the social equity fund, many of you, in, I think in this room, were active voices to make sure the legislature passed a bill that would create the social equity fund. That's got a recurring revenue stream, so it isn't just kind of a one and done opportunity. So the sexual, social equity fund wasn't even a topic we could talk about with the three previous cohorts. The second big thing is that the legislature also give it, gave us the tools to move ahead with social consumption licensing and creating a license for social consumption establishments. We couldn't talk about that with the third cohort. So as this fourth, fourth cohort gets rolling and you're thinking about putting in an application, think about those two big pieces that we didn't have just two years ago. There are great opportunities still available in this industry. I was just saying, I think there's still an untapped market. I think there are still people who are kind of curious about whether cannabis products are right for them, whether it's something they should explore. I think there's still a big untapped market. I actually get excited thinking about social consumption because I think of all the visitors that come to Massachusetts who enjoy cannabis in their home state or their home country and are looking for an opportunity to also enjoy it here in Massachusetts, I think that's going to be another gateway. I think that's going to be another opportunity out there uh, for folks going through the program and folks thinking about the social consumption license. So anyways, thank you, Darius, the team, for having me. Happy to come down, stick around, ask them questions, certainly help us eat all of the food that's in the back. Uh, get to know our partners at Cultivate Ed in the back. They've been fantastic. Ask us questions. That's what we're here for. It's what the team is here for. So thank you all for being here today and look forward to sticking around and having a chance to have conversations with all of you. So thank you, Darius. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate that. Uh, I do want to say, uh, I forgot in my beginning remarks, we do have uh, Brockton Cable Access Network here. 
uh, recording. Um, they're not recording anyone individually. They're just recording the program. But we do want to make folks aware of that. Um, so thank you uh, all for being here to help us uh, spread the message of um, equity today. All right, so as I shared with you, we're going to have a brief presentation on the social equity program and the equity work that's happening at the commission. This hopefully will answer a lot of your questions about the program or maybe uh, help you to specify a little bit more about uh, the direction of your questions. So uh, to give that presentation, please give it up for Ms. Akila Armstrong. And then we'll have this presentation available to everybody afterwards. So if you want to get access to this, just come to our table and we can email it over to you guys. And then once we're done, we're going to have it on the screen so you can watch it again. So let's get started. So again, thank you all for coming out today. This, as Dara said, this is our second of six um, application clinics that we're having throughout the Commonwealth. Last week we were in Lawrence. Today we are in Brockton, and then we're going to be in a few other jurisdictions throughout the Commonwealth later in the month, as well as in April. And I'll show you the full list of where we're going to be a little later. Um, so to get started, my name is Akila Armstrong. I'm one of the project coordinators within the Equity Programming Community Outreach Department at the Cannabis Control Commission. And really excited to be here. Thank you all for coming to learn more about our social equity program. So a little bit about our department. What do we do? We promote the inclusion of communities disproportionately harmed by marijuana prohibition and the war on drugs. And we do this through four main pillars, one of them being our community outreach initiatives. You're here at one of them today and the other events that we're going to be having throughout the Commonwealth. We also do strategic partnerships engagements. So Will, who's at our Mass Cultivate Ed table, he's one of our strategic partners. And we're building up our strategic partnership lists and just trying to connect with more people and get you good information. Other things we do is through our recruitment efforts. So today, we're trying to recruit you guys into the social equity program and give you access to our program and our technical assistance and training. And a little bit more about our equity programming. The main thing we do is our social equity program. So a little bit about that. It was the first statewide um, equity program in the nation. So we're really proud to say we're the first ones to do it in all of the United States. And since we have created our social equity program, many different states have followed suit and created social equity programs of themselves. And to date, we have accepted 872 people into our social equity program. And currently, we have cohort four of the social equity program open. And we've accepted about, I want to say, 90 so, 98 or so people. And it's going to be open until April 30th, and it opens originally on February 5th. And so a little bit more about the social equity program. It creates sustainable pathways into the cannabis industry for individuals most impacted by the war on drugs, aka marijuana prohibition. And the social equity program seeks to provide participants with education, skill-based training, and tools for success within the industry. And we do this through um, our four main areas. That's entrepreneurship managerial and workforce level development, re-entry and um, entry level positions within the workforce, as well as ancillary businesses. And ancillary businesses, um, Commissioner Stebbins touched on that a little earlier, but basically those are businesses that support the cannabis industry, but aren't necessarily plant touching or need a license to be in the cannabis industry. And our hope is upon completion of this program, participants will have acquired the tools and skills um, for training to apply and obtain a license within the Cannabis Control Commission. And however, completion of the program does not guarantee licensure. We just want to say that. And so we do have four criteria to get into our social equity program. The first being income that does not exceed 400% of the area median income and residency within a disproportionately impacted area. And we have currently 30 cities that are disproportionately impacted, Brockton being one of them. Um, so for criteria number one, you just need to prove that you have resided in an area of disproportionate impact for five of the last 10 years, and your income does not exceed 400% of the area median income. And we have those numbers um, here today, so if you need any resources on that, please come to our table and we can give you those numbers. Um, number two and three for eligibility into our program are very similar. It is residency in Massachusetts for the last 12 months and a conviction or continuance without a finding under Mass General Law Chapter 94C or an equivalent offense in another jurisdiction. 
And basically, Mass General Law, Chapter 94C, is a drug-related offense. So that or um, an offense in another jurisdiction would get you access through um, Criteria 2 of our Social Equity Program. And so for Criteria 3, it's very similar to 2, but this is for those who are a spouse of somebody who had a marijuana or a drug-related conviction, or if you are the child of somebody who had a drug-related conviction. And then criteria number four, this is for those who have applied under our economic empowerment priority application. And this opened back in 2018, and there's a list of 112 people who are on that. Um, so few people might not get into that criteria here today, but that is a different criteria to get into the program. And again, if you have questions on eligibility, please come to our table and we can go over this in more detail. And so a little bit about our program benefits. So one of our main things is free access to technical assistance, and this is through our Talent LMS program. Um, it's an online portal where you can take classes and different resources and be able to learn more about the social equity program, the cannabis industry, opening up a business, um, and working in the industry. Um, other benefits we have is expedited license review. Um, we also say for those who maintain majority ownership within um, their organization or their company. We also waive licensing application fees. We waive metric monthly fees, which is a um, platform that tracks our seat to sale system. So you get waived fees for that. You also would get 50% reduction in annual renewal fees. So each year you have to renew your license. So you get 50% off that fee if you're part of this program. Um, and Commissioner Stebbins touched on this a little earlier. So if you are part of our social equity program, you have exclusive access to two license types. The, so, the social consumption license type, which is coming on later, but currently we have the delivery license type, which is exclusive to those who are in the social equity program. Um, and that exclusivity period began um, April 1st of 2022, and it's going until April 1st of 2025. And so about our program design. As I said, our program is on Talent LMS, and we have four different tracks for those who are interested in um, completing our coursework. So we have entrepreneurship, which is for those who want to own a business, own a, either a retail shop, cultivation shop, um, product manufacturing facility, or delivery business. Our entry and re-entry track is for those who are looking for entry-level positions within the cannabis industry. Our core track is for those who are looking for managerial level positions or executive positions. And then the ancillary track is for those who have businesses that can support the cannabis industry. Um, and yeah, so that's a little bit about our program and some of the designs and some of the benefits. We do have resources on some of the classes that we offer. So again, if you want more information on that, come to our table. And just a little reminder, we are gonna be in a few other cities throughout the month of March and April. Next up, we have New Bedford and the Fall River, Fall River area. We're going to be there on March 20th, and we're going to be at the New Bedford Public Library. And then at the beginning of April, Saturday, April 6th, we're going to be in Boston. We're going to be at the Ro uh, Roxbury Innovation Center. And then on April 10th, which is a Wednesday, we'll be at the DCU Center. And then lastly, um, April 22nd, we're going to be at Holyoke Community College, giving out similar resources to like we're doing here. And if you have any questions, feel free to come to our table. And we will have this presentation available for you afterwards if anybody wants this presentation. Thank you all. All right, thank you. I uh, apologize for the <coughs> inconvenience of not having the presentation. The librarian who had the key to the remote went on lunch. But uh, either way, uh, if you, like uh, Akilah shared, if you would like a copy of the presentation, a lot of the information is available on our website, but we can send it to you uh, directly as well. Uh, and now we have a special treat. I do um, uh, love that we could be in the community as much as possible, representing the commission and sharing all of our resources. And obviously, you know how to get us through our equity email. Uh, but uh, I really do think that the uh, life of the program is, a, is around its participants and the stories uh, that we uh, are able to uh, be, be a small part of. And um, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were uh, 
diversifying how we're presenting ourselves in the community. So we asked a few of our, our friends and partners in the cannabis industry to join us today and just to share a little bit about their experience in the industry, their experience personally, and their experience uh, in the social equity program. Uh, so we have a few of them here today that we will bring up in just a moment. But again, I, d I do want to reiterate uh, just the importance of connecting with this community. It's an important community. Uh, it's a small community, but I know that um, there is a lot that I have heard, a lot that I have witnessed around the growth and the direction of a lot of the uh, businesses that have been established and are being developed uh, j just because of the networks that um, were able uh, to be cultivated in this space. So please, please, please take advantage of the resource tables and the folks and the commissioner and the, all the folks who are representing the commission, but more importantly, take advantage of uh, working with one another and speaking with one another, because uh, that's really where you're going to get a lot of your answers. A lot of your, a lot of the folks in this room have been there and done that, and can give you a lot um, of expertise as well. So, uh, without further ado, I want to welcome Tamika Crib, who uh, is uh, from Joint LLC, who. Uh, uh, manages and runs a uh, diversity uh, uh, management and human resources uh, business. And she was profiled uh, in our video, if you saw it online as well. So please welcome Tamika Kriv. Yeah. Oh, you, you can sit, sit, well, down. You sit down. I'll sit down. If you can, yeah, please, yeah. Nice and comfortable. We're trying to keep a relaxed atmosphere. And then I also want to welcome uh, our, the, the other person in, our, in this space who's profiled in our video that you'll see on our website as well, Shay Rainey, who is representing Mass Cultivated. And again, I just want them to share a little bit about their experience um, and uh, in the industry and why, why they feel uh, the, the social equity program is so important. So I'll give you all this mic and feel free to um, answer freely. Okay. Thank you. So I will say, just to me, the crib, and um, as Darren said, I own a um, joint, is the name of my company. I'm cohort three, and I'm ancillary business. So I'm not plant touching. And I really chose that track specifically um, because I had a vision in mind. Um, and I will say, just to kind of start off, to frame it, um, really the reason I feel like I got into this is because, you know, it was around kind of the COVID era and everybody was at home and just, you know, COVID wasn't going anywhere. And I happened to pick up an article and full transparency, and it was really about, you know, the state of, and I believe it was maybe cohort one or cohort two, but it was full transparency about sort of the lack of minority ownership. And not a, in addition to the lack of minority ownership, sort of the lack of, you know, workforce diversity in terms of, you know, people of color being employed at cannabis businesses. And so for me, that really hit me hard. Because again, you're at the time of COVID and you're saying, okay, there's a lot of disparities going on in the healthcare system. Our people are suffering. What's going on? And everybody was like, we're trying to figure this out. We're trying to figure this out. And then coupled by the fact that you have this article, again, full transparency, and I think the state has made significant strides, and that's why we're all here today, is because you know we have to look at our success, but we also have to look at our failures. And I think the state has been doing that all along the way. But it really, really resonated with me in terms of sort of my charge. OK, I've got to do something. I've got to do something. This just does not sit well with me. I, I just don't like this narrative that's being played out. How can I come forward into something and take my passion as working with people and advocating for my community and, and being in HR? How can I bring that forward and propel myself to get involved? So that's kind of like what sort of started me on my journey to even get into the SEP to do a lot of research. And it was a lot of research. You know, I had been hearing about this sort of cannabis is coming, cannabis is coming. Ma Massachusetts had already legalized it, but I really didn't know what an SEP was. And so it's great that we're sitting in this room today because back then, cohort three, and just because became, before I came a part of it, I had no idea. 
I was talking to people, but I had to, had to find it out on my own. And so I, I love the, the fact that the state is actually taking the initiative to bring all of us together throughout the Commonwealth to really bring folks in this room as unity so we can kind of like, okay, let's do this. Let's hear about this. You know, let, let's get you some information. Let's get you tied to different resources. The other thing that I want to say is that, you know, before I turn, turn the um, um, mic over to Shay, one of the things that I, I really want to highlight is really the benefit of the program. And I really want to touch on what Akila said in terms of this LMS. And so for me, when I got in, LMS was the backbone of what I really needed. I, I you know, went to the orientation. I was so excited. Yeah, I'm in the SAP. I got this. But the LMS is something that if you do get in and become an SAP participant, that's really the backbone. For, it was a backbone for me. I'm sure it's going to be the backbone for you because there's a level of accountability that comes with that LMS. You know, you know, some people are not really familiar or not used to doing online learning, but that LMS is really online learning. So you're watching videos, you know, you're watching facilitators, you're taking notes and you're reading and you're looking at your business plan, and there's a level of accountability that's there. That you go into this portal and you say, okay, I'm gonna track my part, I'm gonna track my progress, I'm gonna see how far I've come and watching this video because this is the foundation of just accounting. You know, I don't do accounting, I just pay my bills, but accounting for my business, what am I going to need to do? You know, business 101 practices, building a business plan, that's what the LMS really does for you. It really build, builds in that sense of accountability, and really, you, you, you really feel invested. You really feel invested. Another thing I want to point out is that, you know, the benefit of the program is, is that, you know, there's a lot of people within even my cohort that we were all starting off on square one. It felt very non-threatening. It was non-intimidating. It was like, we're all here to learn. I got 300 people, but this isn't like me. We're all here to learn. And so that was, sorry, that was, I can speak loudly. That was very, very, very critical feeling that you weren't intimidated. And the facilitators, facil the facilitators were wonderful because they all were there to help, to guide, to instruct. Because every, they knew pretty much everybody was starting at the same place. And sort of the last thing that I will say is that I think, you know, the fact of the matter is, is like, I think like the commissioner said, you know, we've come a long way. I was cohort three. They didn't have a social equity fund. I remember being in it and saying, okay, this is something I want to do. You know, I know what my intention is as a, you know, entrepreneur, black female. I'm going to do this. I know what my intention is, and I know I have to be about service. But I don't know about funding. I don't know about funding. I can go to family, I can go to friends, but you know, that's hard. I, I, I really wanna put this together and make sure I have the financial, the, the, the financial resources to kind of continue it down the road, not just like a year or two, but really take it through. And so I think that the fact that the commission, you know, the commission has come so far, sitting here today, just cohort four, like we have this now, just shows the level of commitment in terms of diversifying the equity and the inclusivity. The other thing I'll mention real quick before I turn it over is that, you know, as SEP participants, there's a lot, you gotta think outside the box. That's one thing that I will say. You know, when you're coming into it, there's competition. I kid you not, there is competition. There's competition for me just as being a HR consultant, management, you know, I got a lot of things in my toolkit and I would stress, 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 stress. I have a lot of things in your toolkit. And that's really what I learned, the value in that and teaching that and going through the program. It's just, it's just not one thing. You can have a lot of things that you can kind of pull on to make sure that your business is successful because there is, there is stiff competition. You know it. You see cannabis business, I see cannabis business in my neck of the woods. Oh, there's one in Roxbury now. Oh, I'm like, oh, that's open. Okay, I was, I was going to, you know, this one. I've been to Tito's spot. Like, so there's a lot of things happening within our community and, and within this industry, but you really have to kind of be in the know, look around you, take heed, assess, and kind of go back and say, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to figure this out from my plan of action in terms of the business that I want to start? So again, I, I think there's a value in being here. I think the, the, there's value in opening the social consumption launches. Everything continues to move in the right direction, and I'm just so happy and honored that, and it's a, been a privilege of, for me to be in this space, and I continue to work with people who look for my sort of expertise, you know, in management and HR consulting and all that, and all, all those things. I got a lot, I got a lot. 
And um, I'm just an advocate, you know, for this program, and I'm just so excited to, you know, be in front of you today uh, to, to, to talk. And if there's any, ever any questions, I have my contact information. If there's any, any questions that I can, um, you know, answer, I'll be happy to do that. So that's my story. So what does LMS stand for? Learning management, learning management system, yeah, our platform, yeah, and it's, it's excellent. Again, if you know online learning, or even if you haven't been an online learner, it's just that simple because, again, it, there's that accountability piece. There's the, the, I was the ancillary track, so there's, you know, the, the, the classes, literally, you have to take, you know, business 101, you know what I mean, and, you know, what's safety going to look like, what's security going to look like, all the things, what is your marketing plan? going to look like. And so I think as you go through that system, again, you build, you start to think about these things that maybe you didn't think about when you walked into this room. Well, it's going to be there. And so it gets you sort of starting to think about, okay, I need to take a step back because I want to be successful. We're all here because we want to be successful. But I need to take a step back and really kind of deep dive and lean in. What is this going to look like? Because I know there's going to be competition a couple of blocks from me, but I want to do a really, really good job for my business how I'm going to make it successful. And I think that those programs, you know, serve us so well because a lot of us, you know, we don't do it in our everyday lives. Yeah, we might balance our books, we might balance our checkbook, but when you're talking about a business, it's very, very different. It's completely night and day. And I think that that's so important that you begin to really cultivate those skills and really start to, you know, practice. And I think that that's what the learning management system, through the, when you become an SAP participant, really, that's the value in having that. And having it set up for you, sort of, in that in that sort of space. I had a question about the um, economic threshold. Like, do you know, or can you kind of like talk a little bit towards, the, in your particular case, what was the barrier to entry um, as far as the finances? That's a really good question. I think across the country, and this has been going on for a long time. And I, th I, I, I. I really commend Massachusetts for getting the social equity fund because this that's difficult. We've been talking about this across Canada, 15 states. We've been going, they be going at it. We've been, we're going at it across the country to make sure that when you set up programs like this, it's one thing to get into a program and say, "Oh, come on, let's let's all come on." But it's another thing to have those financial resources available. So for me, and I think cohort three, cohort two, cohort one all those cohorts, for me and the, the people that I met, I felt like sometimes we were kind of going it alone. Like, okay, let me whip out my checkbook, let me take out my credit card, because, you know, even when I started, I was like, okay, I have to make an appointment at the Small Business Association. I have to make sure that I have an understanding of what do, what do I need to do? What are the resources, what are the grants? What is out there for just being a small, small business owner black female and a minority. But the caveat was, it's like, oh, but you're cannabis. And it was like, well, I don't touch the plant. <laughs> like, I'm supporting cannabis companies. And so that's the thing that you really need to think about when you're sitting down. You need to think about before you get on, as you're getting in and as you're applying, think, journal it, write it down. Am I going to be touching the plant? What is out there right now that exists through the Small Business Association that I can maybe go on? Are there classes available? Are there, is, there, is there a class maybe at RCC that can talk about like when you're going through you know, these programs and funding and resources, like how do I be the best project manager I can be? How do I be the best, you know what I'm saying, you know, in, in terms of like finances and organizing finances? Those are real conversations that you're going to need to ask yourself when you step into a business like this. What, you know, and I, and I say, what does is, what is the city of Boston offer? If you are, I'm a Bostonian, I'm a resident of Mattapan. So it's like looking at those resources, whether at the state level or at your city level, to say, what is available to me? I realize whether I'm ancillary or I'm touching a plant, outside of that, I need tools in my toolkit. I need to pull upon multiple resources to make my business a success. And you need to do that now. You don't wait until you get into the program, you can begin to have those conversations with yourself now and go and look at those resources because you're going to need them. There's no question. And I also think that while you're here, you do want to find out about the Social Equity Fund. Again, that wasn't available to me. 
But I, again, I, I will stress that that to me is really the, the backbone of your business. Unless you're walking around with 500K, you know, a million dollars, and you can support it for the next five to 10 years. Many of us don't have that trust fund that we can do that. So if you're not set up like that, you're going to absolutely make that number one. Never mind the naming of your business, because we get into that, you know, there's got to be a naming convention when it comes to cannabis. But it's like, what is, what finances? The finances need to be number one. What am I going to do to make my business sustainable over the next however many years or, how, or whatever? Uh, just really quickly, I'm sorry. I, I do want to make sure that we, we hear from Shay. We'll have an opportunity to answer a few questions as well. But this is why we're here to get that networking and tailoring piece open. So please, um, if there are extensive questions, we, 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 will, look, we will leave time for questions. Um, but there, if there are additional questions towards the end, um, hopefully you'll be able to stay. Mm -hmm. Folks will be able to join us throughout the duration of our event and um, get your questions answered. All right. So thank you, Tamika, for yeah. sharing. Thank you for that word. Thank and you, now Tamika. We're going to hear from yeah. Shay. So as you said, I'm Shay. I will not be as long-winded or take up much of your time. <laughs> but I want you guys to be able to network. I will stick around if you have any questions. I am currently working in the cannabis space already. I am a project manager for a multi-state operator. They're not here today, so we won't mention them. But I am interested in the SEP program, partly for the funding. Mm -hmm. That's available now. Also, I want to do it, I want to work for myself. Like, the big MSO is great, but the cannabis industry is always changing. I was a part of the legacy market, so I've been selling weed and throwing events before it was legal. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody can do it better than me. I'm a Bostonian, I know I'm your competition, so we'll either work together or compete, my sister. But um, that's, that's just the space that we're in, and I'm applying so that I can make some money. I haven't been accepted into the cohort yet, that's why I'm also here to talk to some people and figure things out. But if you have questions, I'm here, Shay Rainey, and I think anybody who's ever involved in the drug aspect, especially cannabis, apply, get the number, take back your space, and be your own boss. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the festivities, people. That, that's, why, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I'm not going to give you all the long words or any of that other funny stuff. We appreciate that. Thank you. So if there are any questions uh, for our panelists, uh, please feel free to ask now. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, did you have a lawyer? Um, yes. Me? I did. You did? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. What is or how does, what, what's the operations of joint? Or what's the scope? So, oh, sorry. Um, cannabis diversity recruitment, and I put diversity specifically because, again, what the, the article that I read. And I wanted to make sure that it was intention that I was trying to do my due diligence and trying to make sure that I was diversifying the cannabis industry. I met with several people. There's big HRP companies out there, but I knew that that was sort of what I wanted to do, and I wanted to put that in a convention within my business, so joint cannabis diversity for recruitment. And um, also HR consulting, because it's something that I've done for the last 20 years, and I wanted to just lend my expertise uh, to this field for people who were looking for that. You know, a lot of us are in business, we're gonna have employees, we're gonna have staff, maybe we have a staff of five, maybe we have a staff of 20, but when you're managing people and you get into situations with sort of FMLA, BFML, you know, employee handbooks and stuff, it becomes a lot because you're managing the operations side of the business, but you have to focus on the people. And to do that, it's just like, it's a lot. It can be really, really overwhelming. So I was, I figured, let me just bring, into my, bring my expertise to this to, this, to these businesses, you know what I mean, so I can help in some way. Thanks. Other questions? Question I have is that, let's say me and someone else in this room, we're both social equity members. Can the two of us together own 51% of the company and still get the benefits? Yeah, the benefits will carry 50 and 50. You know what I mean? Like so, it could like so we could sell forty nine percent, but two of us keep fifty one, and we can like would we could we apply jointly and get the benefits basically? 
Yeah, as long as there's 51% equity stats. Yeah. Within, the, within the company, right. okay, cool. Thank you. Unfortunately, that's it, right? We don't, we don't have any sort of grants or money for you, but that's what the benefit of the social equity trust fund is. So they are, are providing funds for cannabis businesses who are looking to, you know, to start up or like to um, subsidize some of their expenses. So. You gotta do a lot of that. Depends on the business. Yeah. And the conversations be like roundabout. And I'm like, bro, can you just take me between the eyes with it so I can understand where the bread? Like, how much bread do I need to come up with to really get it pop? And a lot of times the conversations be very circular. And I'm like, uh, you didn't really give me nothing. Like, I don't know. Like, 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 like I've heard a lot, but I'm like, talk to me. Yeah, so I think I think it goes for any business, right? There's not a real direct answer for it because I don't know what your business site is. I don't know what it. Well, same thing. Um, the 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 retail track, right? Like the license track. So take that. And it depends on scale, and it might depend on what municipality you're in. So there's so many variables. Which is why uh, uh, I, I really do think that going through the through the course is going to help and answer those questions because it will help you develop your, what your business plan is actually going to be. It might make you say, you know what, I might not be ready for this, but I'm ready for that. Or like this is a whole other lane that I've never even thought of that these people aren't tapping because I have this expertise, I have this knowledge, I know I can kill it here. So. I, I would love to give you direct numbers, and if it were that easy, this would be a lot. This room would be a lot more filled. Seriously, mm -hmm. if, it were, if it was easy, everybody would be here. But it's, it is difficult. But there's value here. There's knowledge here. There's history here. There's context here. There's a network here that our our role with providing the social equity program is to really push folks in the right direction for the areas and the spaces that you might not know you need, right? You, don't, you might not know you need a lawyer for this specific part of your business. You don't know that. You don't know that at a very critical stage, that can mean money for you. So our hope is that we're learning these things, learning these stages at the appropriate time. So you're getting your answers around how much money you're gonna need when you still have the time to raise the money or meet the right people to get the, uh, to be in the right spaces. So there's no black or white, cut, dry answer uh, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's not gonna be that, but our, our hope is to develop uh, all of those skill sets that are surrounding us so uh, everyone can move forward appropriately. I did notice at my hearing that they said they had the right to be prejudiced. What are you being prejudiced about? I would have to <laughs> be specifically they were, around they what. They were saying that they can find any reason to decline you without being prejudiced, and they don't even have to explain it to you. They said that at my hearing. Yeah, I think that um, like suitability is definitely an issue that folks have been dealing with, right? And I think it really goes case by case. So I don't want to give you an answer that could or could not apply for someone else. So let's connect it a little bit around what those specific parameters are. But um, there is a lot of um, information at the table too that will help you. But I'll, I'll make sure that I connect with you as well. All right. So what I, 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 guess I'm, I guess what I'm saying, like, I can answer everyone's specific questions, but I wanted to make it um, as communal as possible. I have a question. Um, is there a certain number of It's a great question. We do not have a cap on the social equity program at this time, though. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, I have a question for you. You were a legacy operator yes, for a while. Sure. I forgot your name, though. I'm sorry. Shay. No problem. Shay. Yeah. Um, what do you think, and I hope Commissioner Stubbins is still in here, what do you think the commission can do to make this licensed cannabis company program more attractive to legacy operators? What can the commission do to make their system look prettier to those legacy operators that maybe would take that step if the system were prettier? That's a good question. I think, for me personally, it, I battled going back and forth whether I was even going to apply for the social equity application because there's a lot of barriers and there's a lot of boxes that they want you to check off. And it's like, you have my criminal record. You know what it is that I've done. I've spoken to you. You've met me personally. Why do I need to check off all of these boxes? I think there should be an other box and there should, they should take into accountability of lived and life experiences. That's what I think that they still need to work on. I'm hopeful that they continue to work on it and it continues to be tweaked, and that's why I'm excited that the commission is here and that they do open and they have public meetings. I, If you're a fellow legacy operator, mm -hmm. go to any public meeting that they have that's oh, in your town, talk to the people, they usually do listen, but I feel that the more of us that come together and talk about our lived experiences, then they'll start to actually change some of those rules. Because if not, we're gonna just continue to operate and then it doesn't really help anybody else. So we need to help each other. And if you can get into a space, like for me, I'm working for a company now, so it's great. But again, you wanna work for yourself. So use the left to help out the right. Thank you. Thank you, I know there are a lot more questions and a lot more thoughts. There's gonna be some great conversations so we'll be here throughout the duration of this event. So I appreciate you all taking the time now to do that. Please connect with one another. If you heard someone say something that sparked your interest and you have an answer for them, please connect with them. If you have a question for someone, please connect with them. But before uh, we turn over to the table and section, I do want to introduce uh, one more person uh, to speak briefly about their programming, uh, Mass Cultivated. Um, uh, this is a uh, service. We've had the privilege of uh, partnering with Mass Cultivator for a, a few years now, and I think that everywhere we go, they, they have an incredible reputation for helping folks in this industry. So I just wanted to introduce um, Will Dunn from Mass Cultivator to speak a little bit about it. Up to you. I'll be real quick too. I don't like taking people's times up. I know when I sit down and listen to people, they're not giving me what I want to hear. I don't want to hear me. So I'll be real quick. <laughs> so our program is basically designed. I came to take over to help you. Whatever you're trying to do, I'm just there in your corner to push and push and push. Any barriers come through, so if it's criminal history that come through, we got corners or something, just figure out how to still get into the business, not on the work and, and point aside, how to get in the business where you can actually still touch the money. Um, so we do expungement, education, and employment. And then besides that, again, it's only designed for brothers like me to get behind y'all and help y'all push through to where y'all need to get. I've been home from prison since 21. I done went through different hoops and hurdles on how to understand business, how to open up my business, how to use business credit. If it fails, it don't matter because your personal credit is still high. You can lose 250000 jump back in, 250000 get back in, keep going where you don't have to worry about selling drugs or doing anything. So when, when sister's talking about how you get into something, ownership, 51% and all that. What are you gonna do for your own personal credit? What are you gonna do for your own business credit so you're not just coming to the table as a, uh, a community face? What business that you're gonna bring to the table so there's no excuses about, I can't do this or I can't do that. What did I learn to come to the table to say, okay, big people, you talk about $2 million, I'm coming with 700,000. Mm -hmm. So 700,000 is my percent plus the 31% where I get to know every quarter I'm tackling a, a big chunk of change for legacy for my family and legacy for the community. So again, I encourage everybody, prohibition always used this all the time, we'll keep using it. When it was alcohol, the government wanted it, they got the taxes off it, they made trains and trains of dollars from the late 20s and the early 30s. We're here at the weed, t weed spot, it took forever, they try and do this in the 40s, 50s, it just wouldn't transpire. It's transpiring now, we are fools, complete fools, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, I need a fool if I don't take this and try to capitalize on anything for your, for your family. You want to go to college and become a doctor and do all that stuff, you can go ahead and do that. But for the community that's already got heartaches from your own people who's going through stuff, and you going through stuff, 
You don't want your kids to go through it. This is an opportunity coming from somebody who's just like y'all. It's an opportunity to jump in and do something and better for yourselves. Thank you. I was supposed to go to the brothers. Like this sister didn't go through the program. <laughs> All right, so we have some great folks here. We really do have some great folks here with the wealth of knowledge. Please utilize them. Please network with one another. We want to thank you again for coming. There is food here. There's sandwiches from Panera uh, and drinks as well. Please help yourselves to that. Enjoy yourselves. Hopefully that will help you stay a little bit longer and ask a little bit more uh, questions. But we're here. Um, if you need anything, uh, thank you so much. And please enjoy. Thank you.